A Damon is locked private detective. In order to make money, he sacrifices his wife to seduce his clients. Then he took photos of the client and his wife together to provide evidence for the client's divorce. Because in the 50s in England, there were strict divorce laws. The court would only grant a divorce if the husband was unfaithful to his wife. Nick made a small fortune by forging leads for clients who wanted a divorce. But it wasn't until Nick arrived at the hotel, ready to film the evidence, he realized that both his wife and his client had been shot dead in their beds. Nick frowned in his tracks at the site. Nick couldn't believe it. The police quickly sealed off the scene. And Nick's ex-colleague, as a former colleague of Nick's, then he was the detective in charge of the investigation. As it turns out, Nick was a sleazy cop years ago. During one of his duties, he had an affair with the suspect's lover. The suspect suddenly came home and discovered their misbehavior. Although Nick eluded the suspect, one of his colleagues arrived at the scene himself, but he was shot dead by the suspect, who was sentenced to Han. Nick became a popular figure in the police force, and Nick began his career as a detective. The suspect's lover became Nick's wife to make a living. Nick pretended to catch adulterers. He provided photographic evidence for clients who needed to divorce. The clients who got the evidence would naturally pay Nick and his wife a commission. Until Nick was approached by a salesman who claimed to be from Italy. It was in the process of divorcing his wife. And in order to get a court order, Sophia asked Nick for help. And Nick agreed. Nick agreed to do it. Nick booked a room on the top floor of a hotel. So no one would notice. But he didn't expect this to happen. The police found no trace of the murderer at the scene. Only the male victim's finger was chopped off. During the inquiry, the police didn't find any suspicious people coming in or out. Nick became the first suspect. Detective Danny couldn't believe that his good friend Nick would do such a thing. Moreover, the police had no direct evidence to prove that Nick was the murderer. In order to find out the truth and to explain to his wife as a detective, Nick decided to investigate himself. Nick learned from Danny that the victim was not an Italian salesman. He was a famous painter with a high price tag. The painter had a wife named Alice and a lover named Laura. Both of them attended the painter's funeral and had an altercation. Nick surmised that the murderer could be between the two of them, as they both had motives for the crime. Before the murder, the painter wanted to divorce his wife Alice. He not only kicked his wife Alice out of the house, but also left his property to Laura. Alice was full of anger, so it makes sense that she killed the painter and Laura as the painter's lover and heir to his fortune. As soon as the painter dies, Laura will get all the painter's property. But Danny also reminded Nick that although both of them had motives, but they both have alibis. Alice was in London at the time of the murder. She had no time to commit the crime, and Laura has a witness that he was with the painter's lawyer at the time of the murder. Of course, we can't rule out the possibility that they hired the painter to kill him. But in order to rule out all possibilities, Nick decided to investigate these two women thoroughly. That night, Nick planned to sneak into Laura's villa, but as soon as Nick arrived at the villa, he was knocked to the ground by Laura. When Nick woke up, he hurriedly explained why he came here to investigate. Instead of being angry, Laura took Nick to the artist's studio. Laura told Nick a secret. That is, the painter's paintings are not only often stolen, there were many fakes on the market, but the artist had found a way to recognize them. Every time he finished a painting, he would leave his thumbprint on it. Now Nick understood why the artist's thumb had been stolen by the killer. But Laura told Nick she didn't kill the painter. Then, she threw a valuable portrait into the fireplace to prove that she didn't do it for the money. Laura said she just admired the painter's talent. She wasn't in love with the painter, but he was obsessed with her. He even threatened to kill himself if Laura didn't agree. Perhaps the painter was so desperate that he killed Nick's wife and then chose to kill himself. But Nick denied Laura's suspicions because there was no gun found at the scene. Before Nick had time to investigate the two women, Nick got himself into trouble because the police found out through investigation that Nick once had a pistol. Judging from the bullet traces, it belongs to the same model as the murder weapon. Nick could only tell Danny that it was a souvenir from his friend. He didn't tell the police because he didn't have a gun license, but Nick still made a discovery. When he sneaked into Laura's house to investigate, he found a red car in the yard. On the night of the murder, a red car was seen parked behind the hotel. Nick suspected that Laura might be the murderer, but when Danny came to Laura's house to investigate with a search warrant, he found a red car in the yard. But when Danny came to Laura's house with a search warrant, they didn't find any useful clues in the car. So Danny and Nick had to return to the scene of the murder. After a thorough investigation, they made a new discovery. The murderer sneaked into the room through the window and killed them. After cutting off their fingers, the killer escaped from the roof because the other end of the roof maintenance ladder leads to the hotel's utility room. He returned to the lobby as if nothing had happened. No one would have noticed. The only question now is where the killer hid the guns and weapons. A chimney opening on the roof soon caught Danny's attention. Sure enough, 
They found the guns and weapons the killer had left behind, but what Danny didn't understand was that the weapons were the same model as Nick's, and Nick also realized that his own weapons were missing. Nah, Nick couldn't get away with it even if he jumped into the river. Even Danny began to suspect that Nick had something to do with this case, but Nick told Danny that he didn't do it because before this case, his office door was broken into and there were traces of theft. At the time, he didn't realize anything was missing, so he didn't really care. He had a lawyer client who came to him for help with a divorce and could testify, because he also found that the door had indeed been broken into. Nick then realized that someone must have set him up. The pistol must have gone missing around that time. Nick asked Danny to give him some time out of his years of friendship with Nick. Danny chose to trust him again, he hid the murder weapon for a while. Nick traveled alone between Alice and Laura to find out the truth. Nick realizes that Alice, the painter's wife, knows nothing about the case, so he takes notice of Laura. Nick has a great sense of humor, and Laura soon falls in love with him. Their relationship goes from investigating to dating. As their relationship developed, Laura revealed a secret about herself. On the night of the murder, she did go to the hotel, but she didn't go to kill the painter. But she wasn't there to kill the painter either. She was there to stop him from forging evidence for a divorce. But Laura didn't want the painter to do that, so she was going to stop him at the hotel that night. But he was too late, but Laura spotted a suspicious man climbing down from the roof of the hotel that night. Laura didn't get a good look at the man's face, she only saw him light a cigarette and leave. And Laura, in order not to get involved in this matter, afterwards, he found a lawyer and faked an alibi. All the Laura told Nick everything. Nick was always suspicious of Laura. Late one night, while Laura slept, Nick went into the living room to look for clues. When Laura woke up, she was furious and questioned Nick. Nick said he just wanted to find his wife's murderer and hoped Laura could forgive him. Nick took Laura to the place where a colleague died because of his philandering ways. The accident broke Nick's heart. After hearing what happened to Nick, Laura began to understand Nick. Just when Laura was forgiving Nick, Nick took out his lighter and tried to light a cigarette for Laura to ease his emotions. Because the lighter was crushed by the car, Nick had to flick the lighter down a few times to light it. But because of this action, Laura's face turned pale. She was so shocked that she couldn't explain and left in a hurry. Nick was confused and wanted to go after her to ask her what happened, but he was stopped by the police and beaten up. It turns out that Nick's philandering led to the death of a colleague two years ago. Nick has aroused the discontent of other officers in the police station. On the other hand, Danny made a new discovery through secret investigation. Danny accidentally found out that the lawyer likes the same sex. With this information, the painter's lawyer tries to keep his scandal quiet, facing Danny's interrogation. He not only admitted that he had forged Laura's alibi, he also said he'd found out who the murderer was. But just then, Danny got a call from Nick asking for help. Danny, being a man of his word, told his lawyer to meet him in his office. Danny returned with a Bruce Nick. Danny told Nick that he had found the murderer and they went straight to the painter's lawyer's office. What Danny didn't realize was that the painter's lawyer knew he was in deep shit. He was so ashamed that he chose to kill himself. But before he did, he left a note. The note said that it was Nick who killed the painter and his wife. At this point, Danny could no longer protect Nick, who was finally arrested by the police and sent to court. Based on the evidence, the prosecutor immediately charged Nick with murder. The murder weapon was Nick's, but he hid it from the police, and they also found out that Nick's wife had a large amount of insurance money. This was enough to show that Nick had a good motive for the murder. Both of these were enough to charge Nick with the murder, at a time when Nick was unable to defend himself.